Hello guys, welcome to Arup Sir's Chemistry Classes. Now I am going to teach you the chapter Basic Concept of Chemistry, which is also termed as Chemical Arithmetic for Class 11 and also for all competitive exams and obviously for all boards. So before learning the chapter Chemical Arithmetic or basic concept of chemistry, we have to first understand two terms, precision and accuracy. Now you see, what does precision mean? Precision, the term precision means how closely the individual measurements agree with one another. How closely the individual measurements agree with one another. And accuracy means how close are the values of the individual measurements with the exact value. So you see, I have written some data, some set, set of data 2.82, 2.40, 2.12 and 2.86. You see, these data are not close to each other. So they are not precise. But on the other hand, in the right side, I have written a set of data which is very much close to each other 2.82, 2.81, 2.80, 2.82 2 again and 2.81 so these are precise data because they are in close agreement with each other but the term precision and accuracy are not the same accuracy means how close are the values of the individual measurements with the exact value I have taken the exact value as 2.83 say now you see that these precise values 2.82, 2.81, 2.80 and 2.82 and 2.81 again we see that these sets of values and the individual values of these sets is in close agreement with the exact value so these are the accurate values and you see that these values, these sets of values is in no close agreement with the exact value so they are not precise and as well as they are not accurate but these data are all precise and also close to the accurate value so these are more accurate than these values so we can say that precise value may or may not always be accurate but if the individual values are in close agreement with the exact value then they must be precise Precise value may or may not always be accurate, but if the individual values are in close agreement with the exact value, you see the individual values all are in close agreement with the exact value, so they are always precise. But you see, the all the precise value may not be the exact value. They may be precise, but they not be the exact value. This inaccuracy in the result or being inexact result, there are some phenomena like manual error, like calibration error, etc. So, I hope you understood the term precision and accuracy. Now, we will now we will be learning about significant figures. Now, what do we mean by the number of significant figures? The number of significant figures is the measurement. In the number of figures that are known with certainty plus one which is uncertain beginning with the first non-zero digit I'm repeating again the number of significant figures in a measurement is the number of figures that are known with certainty plus one which is uncertain beginning with the first non-zero non digit so I am explaining it you see we know that the Avogadro number is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Here, the number of significant figure is 4. Here, the number of it is, there is 4 significant figures. Now, the last one, the last one after the non zero digit is not significant at all. We may also, some may also write 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. Here is also the number of significant figures is 3, but this term, this digit 3, is not significant. There is a difference between 2 and 3. Now, you see, 
there are certain rules for finding out the number of significant figures. So rule one, all non-zero digits are significant. All non-zero digits are significant. You see one, two, three, four. In this number, one, two, three, four. You see there are four significant figures. There are clearly four significant figures. And in the number 189, 189, there are three significant figures. Rule number two, all zeros between two non-zero digits are always significant. So see, between two non-zero digits, one and seven, there are two zeros. These zeros are also significant. So in the number 1.1007, there are four significant figures. And in the number 1.0024, the zeros are in between two non-zero quantity. Therefore, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 significant figures. Rule number 3, in number less than 1, when the number is less than 1, then all zeros at the right of the decimal and in the left of non-zero non digit are significant. I repeat again, in number less than 1, all the zeros at the right of decimal point and in the left of the non-zero non digit are significant. For example, in the number 0 0.005, you see there are two zeros before a non-zero digit that is left of the non-zero digit but right of decimal. Therefore, there are three significant figures in this number. And on the other hand, 1.008, there are four significant figures. Rule number four, zeros to the right of decimal point are significant. So you see five point, the number 5.00, there are three significant figures. In the number 0 0.050, there are only two significant figures. This zero is not significant. In the number 0 0.5000, there are four significant figures. So zeros to the right of decimal point are always significant, okay? zeros to the right of the decimal point. Number five, if a number ends in zeros that are not to the right of decimal point, if a number ends in zeros that are not to the right of decimal point, then all zeros may or may not be significant. For example, 1500, the number 1500 may have two, three, or four significant figures. But if it is a measured quantity, then all the zeros are significant. I want to say that if it is not merely a number, but a measured quantity, then all the zeros are significant. For example, in the measured quantity 1050 meter, there are four significant figures. And we are converting into kilometer, 1.050 kilometer, there are also four significant figures and if we convert it into centimeter 1.050 to the minus 5 centimeter then there are also four significant figures so from this we could conclude that the change in the unit of measurement do not change the number of significant figures of the quantity the change in the unit of measurement do not change the number of significant figures of the quantity now last one in a set of data the data having the least significant figures, this number of significant figures is the most accurate one. For example, in a given problem, the data given are 0.28 which has two significant figures, 0 0.035 which has three significant figures, 2.025 which has four significant figures. Then the accurate result will possess only two significant figures since it is the number which possess only this number of that is two significant figures okay so the accurate result must possess or will possess only two significant figures now guys we will, we will be learning law of chemical combinations so to learn the law of chemical combinations we will first take some light on the law of definite proportion proposed by Proust the law of definite proportion says that irrespective of the source and irrespective of the process of 
preparation a particular compound will always possess particular elements and the ratio of those elements in that compound will be always constant so here we see that water may be produced by the reaction of hydrogen with oxygen like this and also water may be produced by passing hydrogen gas over red hot copper oxide and water also may be collected from different sources but water will always possess two elements hydrogen and oxygen and the ratio of their masses will always be Two is to sixteen equals to one is to eight. That is in H two O. This is the extract of law of definite or law of constant proportion. Now, law of multiple proportion says that if two elements, two different elements, combines together to give rise to different compounds, then in those different compounds. with a fixed mass of a particular element the mass of the other elements that combines will bear a ratio of simple whole number so we can see carbon and oxygen these two elements combines to form carbon monoxide and also carbon dioxide two different compounds in carbon monoxide the ratio by mass of carbon is to oxygen is 12 is to 16 and in carbon dioxide the ratio by mass of carbon is to oxygen equals to 12 is to 32 so the ratio of oxygen that is combined with a particular element carbon whose mass is also fixed that is 12 parts by mass or 12 part by weight is 16 is to 32 which is equals to 1 is to 2 and which is a simple whole number which is a ratio of simple whole number this is the extract of law of partial proportion which was proposed by john dalton now we will learning law of gay-lussac's law of gaseous volume now according to gay-lussac's law of gaseous volume gay-lussac's law of gaseous volume states that at the condition of same temperature and pressure when two or more gaseous reactants reacts with each other the ratio of their volume will be in the ratio of simple whole number and if the product or products are also gaseous then at the condition of same temperature and pressure the ratio of the the volume of the reactants with that of the products will also bear a simple whole number ratio for example at the condition of same temperature and pressure according to experiment we have found that one volume of hydrogen reacts with one volume of chlorine to give two volume of hydrogen chloride gas so the ratio of volume of hydrogen is to chlorine is to hydrogen chloride is 1 is to 1 is to 2 which is a ratio of simple whole number now this is the extract of gay-lussac's law of gaseous volume or simply gay-lussac's law now atomic mass unit or simply am2 now what do you mean by atomic mass unit atomic mass unit is defined as a unit which is used to measure the actual mass of an atom of an element so you see one atomic mass unit is actually 1/12th 1/12 parts of an actual mass of the actual mass of a c12 atom 
that is an atom of carbon 12 isotope which turns out to be 1.6605 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram this is also called one dalton or one avogram one avogram but nowadays a new unit unified mass is applied which is also equals to atomic mass unit so the atom, atomic mass of nitrogen if it is given by 14 then the actual mass of nitrogen atom is given by 14 a m u or simply 14 u or 14 into 1.6605 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram okay similarly the molecular weight of oxygen gas or oxygen if be 32 then the weight or mass of actual molecule is given by 32 a mu which is equal to 32 unified mass which is equal to 32 into 1.6605 into 10 to the power minus 24 gram now we will be learning about a new term limiting reagent limiting reagent so limiting reagent is called or is defined as the reagent which is consumed completely in a chemical reaction suppose we start a chemical reaction with more than one reactants now the reactants which is completely consumed in the given chemical reaction is called the limiting reagent so after limiting reagent we will try to understand why the atomic masses of all the elements are fractional so to, for, for before this we have to learn a term weighted average suppose our class has 20 pupils out of them 10 pupils or 10, 10 students have an average age of 15 years and rest 10 have an average rate of 16 years therefore the total age of all the students will be 10 into 15 plus 10 into 16 and the average will be by 10 plus 10 and this average is called weighted average is called weighted average weighted average <coughs> now you see similarly out of 100 chlorine atom in nature 75 chlorine atom that is 78 percent possess a mass number of 35 and 25 atoms that is 25 percent of chlorine possess mass number of 25 that is atomic number of sorry atomic number of 37 so the total mass of 75 chlorine atoms out of 100 is 75 into 30 5 and the total mass of 25 atoms out of 100 each with atomic mass 37 comes out to be 25 into 37 so total mass of 100 atoms comes out to be this addition of the products now the average mass of protein atom will be divided by 75 plus 25 which is which turns to be 35.46 that this is the average atomic mass of chlorine atom and this is always fractional so the atomic mass of an atom is always a fraction because atomic mass or average atomic mass is actually the weighted average of the atomic masses of the different isotopes of that element present in nature this weighted average is always fractional that's why average atomic mass or atomic mass of an element is always a fraction guys now we will come to the most important part of this chapter that is mole concept mole concept but before learning this mole concept we should understand 
for the term mole means a mole of a substance is defined as the number of fundamental particles that is atoms molecules ions electrons radicals etc which is present exactly as that present in 0.012 kg of carbon 12 atom that is the number of atoms present in 0.012 kg of carbon 12 isotope the amount of substance which also possess the same number of fundamental particles in them is called one mole of those substances or one mole of that substance okay therefore we know that 16 g or 0.016 kg oxygen atom contains as many carbon 12 atoms present in 0.012 kg of carbon 12 therefore one mole of oxygen atom means 0.016 kg of oxygen atom similarly 32 g of oxygen means one mole of oxygen atoms since in 32 g of oxygen there are same number of carbon same number of oxygen molecule as the number of carbon 12 atoms present in 0.012 kg so after studying the mole we will learn a new term kg mole kg mole kg mole a kg mole means nothing but one Thousand mole. That is thousand mole of a substance is called one kg mole of that substance. For example, thousand mole of a substance is is equals to one kg mole of that substance. Therefore, one kg mole oxygen means thousand into thirty-two gram of oxygen. That is three two zero 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 gram of oxygen or thirty-two kg oxygen. Similarly, one kg mole nitrogen. Means thousand into twenty-eight gram of nitrogen, which is equals to twenty-eight thousand gram of nitrogen, which is equals to twenty-eight kilogram of nitrogen. Okay, this is the kg mole. This is what we mean by kg mole. Now, after learning kg mole, we'll learn the term Avogadro number. So what does Avogadro number mean? One mole of any substance, one mole of any substance contains same number of fundamental particles like atoms, ions, radicals, electrons, etc. This number is a constant, and this number is called Avogadro number, whose value is six point zero two two into ten to the power twenty three, and it is denoted by capital N sub is capital A number Avogadro N A. Now this is Avogadro number. Now we could should learn how to convert, how to carry out conversion between moles, mass, volume, and number. You see, there are direct relation between mole and mass. Mole, mass in gram, and gram to mole. Number two. mole to volume and volume to mole and number 3 mole to number and number to mole whenever we will try to convert mole into gram volume and number we will multiply we will multiply and whenever we will try to convert mass volume or gram to mole 
we will divide we will under divide so multiplication and division must be done but by which in case we, which by which factor we should multiply or divide the mole or the gram volume or number so you see i am writing in the brackets the factors in case of conversion between mole and mass in case of molecule molecular mass molecular weight and in case of atoms atomic weight during volume conversion the factor will be 22.4 liter or 22400 milliliter or centimeter cube at STP at standard temperature and pressure and for conversion between mole and number the factor will be avogadro number 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 okay so that whenever some amount of substance will be given in gram if we try to convert it into mole we will see first is a molecule or is an atom if it is a molecule we will divide the amount of gram by its molecular mass or molecular weight and if it is an atom we should divide the mass expressing gram by atomic weight or atomic mass to convert it into mole similarly when mole is given if we try to convert it into gram we could we should multiply it by molecular mass in case of molecule and by atomic mass in case of case of atoms similarly in the second and the third cases now we will be learning about another term this is the last part of the chapter empirical formula empirical formula suppose glucose has a mol molecular formula of c6h12o6 therefore the ratio of number of atoms is carbon is to hydrogen is to oxygen equals to 6 is to 12 is to 6 that is 1 is to 2 is to 1 so that we can write that the empirical formula of glucose is c h2o so the empirical formula of a molecule may be defined as their as the molecular formula of that molecule which is expressed in terms of ratio of number of atoms of the constituent elements present in the molecule so here another example suppose hydrogen peroxide has a molecular formula of h2o2 therefore ratio of number of atom atoms hydrogen is to oxygen equals to 2 is to 2 which is equals to 1 is to 1 so empirical formula of hydrogen peroxide is ho now it is evident from this fact that if we multiply ch2o with 6 we will have again the molecular formula c6h12o6 similarly if we multiply the molecular formula with 2 of hydrogen peroxide in case of hydrogen peroxide then we will get the molecular formula h2o2 therefore we may conclude that molecular formula molecular formula is always equals to a simple multiple that is a in a simple multiple of empirical formula empirical formula and we of course know another term that the relation between vapor density or vapor density or relative density with molecular mass if the molecular mass be m and the vapor density be d then m equals to 2 into d or m equals to 2 into vapor density 2 into vapor density this is an important relation we should keep it in mind for doing problems so guys today up to this we'll be back with some problems in the next session for till then goodbye